Cody. <laughs> Hello students of Eastern, I hope you all are doing fantastic today. Um, welcome to another cooking with a, no, cooking made easy with Dr. Patri Patricia Dobson. That's right. Um, and we will get to what we are making shortly, but first I want to give a huge shout out to um, KENW and um, the student staff, um, Aisha, Marilyn, Claire, Owen, Leandre, and um, Adon. So thank you all for being here. And now I will pass it off to Dr. Dobson on what we are cooking. We are gonna make jacked up burgers and fries. So the very first thing you need to do is set your oven to 425 degrees. The French fries, French fries, take the longest. It <laughs> takes about a half hour, 35 minutes to cook. So um, go to your oven, turn it on to 425 degrees. And we have some of our fries cut up already, but we're actually going to show you how to slice these bad boys into French fry chunks. Yes, yes. All right. Pick your tater. This that one. one. <laughs> okay. So um, with your knife, be careful that your fingers aren't in knife range. Kind of do this so that it's a little bit of a claw. And then put the knife in the center away from your little pink digits because that's not good. And then you're gonna put the knife in and slice it in half. All right, there's the start of your French fries. And then you're gonna do that again, just repeat it. Put your fingers on the back here, kind of curled up so that you can have a shield and then put the knife in the center and then you've split them again. Dun, dun, da. That kind of Isn't that a beautiful sound? French fries in the making. It is. This is just so easy to make and so delicious. All right. Now what you're going to do is go ahead and take your knife, and you're going to do this on based on how thick you want them, and then just start <coughs> to make slices. And it doesn't matter if they're not perfect because there's no such thing as an imperfect french fry, and all french fries are delicious. Very good, just like that, so that they're sliced. If it'd be so thick, this one just... That's, that's <laughs> and then if you're a little nervous to... You can either start cutting them into slice sizes if they're stacked, but if you're nervous about that, just do it one at a time. And I'll, these are kind of thin, so I'll do two. And see, it looks like a french fry. Yes. It acts like a french fry. You've got several fry-sized cuts. Very good. That and we're gonna not really a fry, but it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And then you just keep doing that till your potato is all, all cut into slices. And you can season with us. What we're gonna do is use salt and pepper. And for the first 15 minutes or so, we are going to let these guys just sort of take a nap in the oven for a while. And at about the 15 minute mark, 20 minute mark, we're going to sort of stir them around and flip them. And then we're going to put Parmesan cheese on them because French fries and Parmesan cheese, delicious. Oh, we cut them in half again. Yes. That was me not paying attention, sorry. Well, you know, thick French fries, skinny French fries, they're all fries. You are correct. <laughs> If it's a fried potato, I will eat it. Oh gosh, I will too. And what's nice about these, once you, we're gonna drizzle them with oil, and we'll do that in just a second in a bowl, because that's how the salt and pepper initially will stick. And you can get very, very experimental and go a little nuts with the types of spices that you use. I like just salt and pepper because then the cheese, oh, it just sings when it comes out. But if you want to put cayenne pepper, if you want to put dill, if you want to put any other spice, you can. And it just becomes a really beautiful thing. Okay. <clears throat> so here we have a whole lot of potatoes that are already cut up. This is the fry palooza. And we'll do about half at a time so that we'll make sure that the oil and the spices and stuff will sort of stick. Make sure you keep your cutting board clean-ish. 
That's right. Are you a messy cook? Yes. I am too. That's how I know I'm doing a good job. If I, if I come out looking like I just went to war with either um, some kind of a spice or flour, I've, I feel like I've done a lot of work. You're good. All right. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to do the mixing or would you like me to? You demonstrate first and then I will gladly take over. Okay. So, what you're going to do is just sort of eyeball this. Um, so, just drizzle a little bit of oil, and it doesn't matter the type of oil. You can use vegetable oil, uh, olive oil. I actually have at home a blend of coconut oil and olive oil, and it's really nice. It, it just makes things crispy. It makes it, well, at least I tell myself that coconut oil <laughs> is healthy uh, with mix with olive oil. Sprinkle it with your preferred amount of pepper. Um, for me, I know that it has enough pepper for me when it makes me sneeze. Uh, Wayne does not like that much pepper, but it's kind of like whoever is in the kitchen doing it at the time, that's how much pepper you use. And then you salt it too. Now, another way that you can sort of jack up your fries is if you use that seasoned salt. Oh, oh yes. Yes. And my brother-in-law um, turned me on to that tagine spice. I'm, my glasses are falling. Yeah, you can put that on the French fries too. <laughs> there, that's how I've got enough pepper. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, why don't you grab one of the pans and then all you do is this. You just oh. flip those puppies around. Now, you're gonna mix them up and yeah, there's, there's oil. Um, that's okay. It'll make your hands young and smooth and soft. And then because we're gonna use this again, um, why don't you take a, a little bit of the oil, just a little, and then and put it on the pan. Yep. I've got a, a paper towel. Dink. Well, actually, since my hands are already oily, Dink. all you have to do, and you're just doing this because you don't want it to stick just a teeny bit more. There's oil on the fries, remember, but they're going to be in the you oven. Said a tiny bit. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's the perfect amount. You don't want them swimming. Um, and again, you can fool yourself and say, well, this amount of oil is not too terrible. I can rationalize. <laughs> and then all you do is just spread them out. And then I'm already seeing that I probably need a little bit more pepper for me. Um, so once I get them arranged on the plate, I will go ahead and put a little bit more. And now we're going to have you do the very same thing with the next batch. You just try to make them a thin layer mm -hmm. so that this way everybody gets crispy, especially because at the halfway mark or so, you're going to toss toss again. All right, so let me give you the the magic potato bowl. Okay. Yay! I know. <laughs> There's fries. <laughs> All right, and then you just take the oil and drizzle it. Oh, I was like, where'd the oil go? Yeah, and just kind of eyeball it again. And while you're doing that, I'm going to throw some pepper more here. Did I get a little excited with the oil? Yes. That's okay. And let me sprinkle a little because my hands are a little drier. Go ahead and start flipping those around. Ooh. And what you're trying to do is get everybody coated as evenly as possible. This one got a lot of pepper on it. Let's Sorry. move that on. Oh. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. They're going to taste fabulous, I know it. I think they will too. And then while you're flipping, I'm going to grab the other pan. And then we'll just dump. Yeah, see all the, the extra oil? We won't have to put it on the pan like we did the first one. And it's just, you eyeball it. And we've got, more? yep, put them all on there. And, and then we can also add them back to this. And then just kind of spread them. And then you're going to put these in the oven at 425 degrees. You want to open that for me? All right. 
So we will eyeball that about 15 minutes out. And now the next thing we're going to do is, this is so easy and it sounds so fancy. We are going to actually make tomato onion jam. I already know how you feel about onions. You told me. <laughs> I can <laughs> attempt, but it's, it'll be fine. It'll the be. The crowd's gonna see some tears, so. Yeah, it'll. <laughs> it's so good. It's worth any tears that you might have. Okay. All right. So for onion jam, what you do first, you want to cut off the ends of the onion, and we may not need to. We'll just kind of eyeball it. So you're cutting off both ends, and see, it'll kind of fit flat like that. For me, this is the hardest part to get the paper off. <coughs> Those are I know. powerful. I like, <laughs> well, you know, if you happen to have one of those food processors at home, this is, this is when it would be nice to have it. But there's something to be said for doing the chopping yourself because you can make them really nice and thin. So let me throw this in my bag down here. All right. so. What you're going to do, remember it's got a bottom, you're going to cut this in half. And remember your, your fingers are here because you don't want to slice and steady the onion and then just go. And then take a sniff. <laughs> and now what you're going to do is go ahead, some people like this diced so they're small. I like to do it so that they're strings because then it makes it, the hamburger feel all the fancier. Yeah. Just start cutting, and again, you're using your fingers as a guide, sort of, and you just slice. And they look like slices, but the magic will start here in just a second. And you just keep slicing. And because there are a lot of people that are going to eat the burgers when we're done, I bet we're going to have to do both onions. Alrighty. <laughs> I will attempt. All right. It's not going to be a successful attempt, but I'll attempt nonetheless. That's all right. And you know, again, it doesn't matter if they're perfect because we're going to saute these, cook them down a bit in oil, and then we're going to add the tomatoes, and that's going to be what will start to turn it into jam because of all the sweetness that come from tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And you see how you've got all these? They look like slices, but once we start breaking them apart, yes. they turn into these stringy bits. <laughs> And we'll just do it again. Would you like me to start on this one? You bet. Okay. While I sniff and pretend that my eyes are not burning out of my face. <laughs> Someone told me that if you cut an onion under cold water, that it that helps. keeps it. Yeah. I don't, it's never worked for me. Okay. See that? Isn't that nice? Well, and you know, some people don't like onions. But remember, they're not going to stay like this. They're actually going to break off into these little stringy bits. And we're going to cook them down, and they're going to turn brown and kind of crunchy-ish. How Do many you... of y'all are good at cutting onions? Because it's clear I'm not. <laughs> well, does anybody have any tips for not crying when you're cutting onions? Since we're both dying here, we would like to know that. <laughs> Yes, I what? would. Cody said stick a matchstick in your mouth to keep the onion fumes from reaching the eyes. Really? Interesting. I've never heard we that. We don't have any matchsticks, but I love, I, for next time. Yeah. Right now I'm just having trouble focusing on the onions because of the tears. <laughs> While you're cutting that, I'm going to get a pan. Sorry, we went kind of fast, but how did everybody's fries turn out? You I know, could. we should have asked, does anybody have fries that they can show a picture to us? Chew mint gum, that works too? Really? Who's brave enough to show us your french fries, your potatoes? Do we have anybody? I'm loving the onion tips. Oh, that one didn't work. That's okay, because remember, you're gonna, we're going to cook all of this down so it won't matter. I successfully cut one half of my onion. And not you, so that's a victory, right? Yes. I would hope y'all realize this is the first time I've ever successfully cut an onion. Really? Yes. And look, you're doing great with your fingers too, kind of guiding the knife. We're going on this journey together, everybody. We really are. <laughs> and that's where the journey ends because I talk too much about it, so. 
All right, well, this is good. So now what we're going to do, you're going to take your skillet, all right? And it's just, you can see, it's just an ordinary pan. Um, how does the electric stove work? I want to say that this one is this one. Okay. But I could be wrong, so we'll see. <laughs> so what you're going to do now is start the process of cooking the onions down. And this takes probably anywhere from seven to eight minutes. Um, so go ahead and you're going to put oil in. And we'll let that heat up a little bit. Yep, I can start to feel it. Okay. And okay. then let's put it about there to get the oil hot. Okay. I usually cook on a gas stove, so this is kind of an experience to use electric and to remind myself that because it doesn't have burners, you know, to watch what I'm doing. I'll turn that a little bit higher. While we're waiting for that, one of the reasons, if you just look at these onions, there's a little bit, you know, onion slimy and stuff. <laughs> but when you cook them in the oil um, and then we add the tomatoes, it turns into this beautiful mixture. Um, and I, I don't know why they call it jam. I guess it's just because it's kind of a, a, a thicker thick. substance. Yeah, the, the juice from the tomatoes and the broth just sort of reduces down and it becomes this beautiful, um, lovely hamburger topping. <laughs> And while we're waiting for the oil to heat... Dr. Dobson, may I ask you, how yeah. do you check your oil? Well, um, my mother... D don't do this. My mother would... Uh, and it, Yeah, don't do this. She would take water. She'd put her fingers under water, and then she would do that. And if it sizzled, she'd say, okay, it's ready. Um, I don't know that you're supposed to do that. I know. I <laughs> so so. <laughs> uh, I just kind of keep feeling like that. And then when it starts to get a little warm or I feel like the heat is, is getting there, I'll just put a little piece of, of onion or something and then sizzle. Okay. And that way I can tell. And it's the same thing, I don't know, if you, have you ever made stovetop popcorn? I have. So when you start the oil to, to getting warm, you can put three kernels of popcorn in there. And when all three pop, then you know it's time to put your sugar and your salt and the popcorn in, because I love kettle corn. And you can do that on the stove. It's like, not going to lie, when I make stove pop, stove top popcorn, I kind of just pray and I just throw all the corn <laughs> kernels in at once, so. <laughs> well, you can do that too. <laughs> Understood, not the correct way. <laughs> well, just don't flick the water. And see, with the electric stove, you can see how hot that is. Um, it's getting red, and uh, that's good, we, because we want those onions to cook. And the little bits, it doesn't matter again if they are not all the same size because once that oil is hot, you know what? I'm going to we'll take my knife and yeah. just maybe go through this one more time. <laughs> if, as long as they're close, it's fine because they're just going to cook mm -hmm. and you want them all. Really what you're trying to do is get the onions in the pan and get them to all sort of hang out in the oil together and sizzle and some will be a little bit more tender than the other and that's what's really good because you've got some crunch and some snaps but that real strong kind of raw oniony flavor goes away how's everybody else's onions looking let's yeah. let's see the onions i want to see them we want to see what uh, what's going out there in the virtual world show what is that movie Show me the money. Show us the onions. Yes. <laughs> all right, they're starting to sizzle. And so all you do now is just take the onions and start splitting them apart. So if you want to do that, I'll okay. do some too. Isn't that sizzle a nice sound? It is. And then in just a couple of minutes, what's been making us cry will actually... I know. I know. It didn't Look start away. hitting until the <laughs> onions actually like were cut, cut. And when you're doing this, make sure that you do kind of separate them um, because the oil is hot. You can't go back into, um, into the pan and separate them out that way. And there's some hot spots in the, the electric top that we need to be watching for. We will do that. Thank you. And this one, I think we're just going, it's, it's just going by the wayside. <laughs> Will we be adding any spices? 
Not yet. Okay. What we're going to do after these cook down a little bit it's okay. is um, add a little bit. We're going to add the tomato, and then we're going to go in and add some chicken broth. And if it's still a little bit too thick, we can add some water or um, some more stock just to kind of get it to, to go. Now, if you want to take the spatula and just kind of stir it around a little bit, <laughs> there, we just had this conversation this about what side you have to have on uh, the pan thing. When my husband is cooking at home, the pan handles are always turned that way. And then as soon as I come up to help him do something, I have to flip them the other way and hold with my left hand and then, fl I know, <laughs> and then flip like, oh. around. <laughs> All right, can you see the onions and, and what that's doing? And you can see why this part takes a little bit. The burgers actually go relatively quickly, but it's getting the process of the onions to cook um, down enough so that we can put the tomatoes in. And that's, it's the sugar from the tomatoes that make it sweet and jammy. And that's why for this, we don't add any kind of sugar or anything to it. If you, just a little extra, if you have some bacon, ooh. You can throw a little, a little bit of bacon in there too because, you know, bacon is its own food group and bacon makes everything better. I'm trying to separate them without crying. I know. See, that is beautiful. I think what we can do is put a little bit of pepper just because it's pepper. Mm -hmm. All right. My favorite thing to add is salt. Gordon no. Ramsay could make me a meal that was perfectly salted, and I'd still add salt. Yeah. I would. I don't add salt at this point because the bouillon that we're going to use, um, the bouillon and then the chicken sock, will have salt in it. So I wait until that's in before I start adding. That was one of the onions I cut. I didn't, I didn't that's tell. okay. <laughs> it's going to be lovely. And now they're all coated with the oil, and we can just kind of let that go. And let's cut some tomatoes for the jammy part. Alrighty. All right. These are Roma tomatoes, and they're nice and compact. And what we do with these is cut the ends off. And then they're nice. They kind of stand up at attention. I think I'm doing exactly what they do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there <Yes>. you go. <laughs> uh, what we'll do is go ahead and cut them in half. And it's easier a lot of the time to go ahead and cut the onion this way. But when I, when I do it th this way, I tend to cut or press too hard with the knife and then it squishes out the juice. And we want the juice to go into the onions. So I do it upside down. And this way I can kind of gently go through and cut the tomatoes. I already messed up. You, they, this is going to be jam. You can't mess up. <laughs> See, that's perfect. They look, they look like little soldiers going off to the onion war thing or party. All right. Look at so how we'll, beautiful. I know. They I are beautiful. Them. See, isn't this art? <laughs> it is, it is. And if you want to give the onions another stir. I'm feeling pretty good that this is the first time in, um, okay, decades that I've <laughs> used an electric stove that nothing is on fire. And so I'm really <laughs> happy about that. And look at Cody. Yeah, bacon. <laughs> what you could also do, um, some people do this, uh, we, we do at our house, when we make bacon, we save the drippings, and you can use that instead of oil. Mm -hmm. oh, it's just fantastic. I like cooking eggs in. Oh, fingers. I do too. Oh. I'm sure that's not healthy. It's not, but. <laughs> but these are vegetables, so yeah. it kind of cancels out the unhealthy. So now what we're going to do with the tomatoes is just, and I'm going to be real careful, is just kind of cut them like this. And see, you can see as I'm cutting that they're sort of trying to separate a little bit. But that's OK. What we can do is just squeeze it off into the pan. So a little. Yeah, just in little chunks. Now, some of the tomato will break down as it's cooking. And that's part of what starts this process to thicken up. And uh, then you'll have other pieces that stay more intact. She's 
she saw my cutting with the onion and was like, I'm only going to give her one tomato. <laughs> Your onions. No, look at that. You did a great job. Is this one dripping a little bit? Yeah, it's those. It's the drippings. We do want some of the drippings. So we'll just squish it off of the cutting board. The Who else is bit? doing this out there? Is anybody cooking with us? If you are, let us see what you're doing. Pretty please. <laughs> Cody, you have to be cooking. What are you what are you working on? How's it going over there? They're going fabulous. I love the smell of sauteed onions. It's isn't it amazing? And it's it got, they're starting to look really translucent. So this is what we're going for. And the more they cook, the more translucent they'll become. It's warm enough in the kitchen that my glasses are <laughs> sliding down my face. <laughs> All right. So. Put them in the middle. And just make a little circle or no? Nope. Go ahead and kind of spread them out evenly. And what we're going to do and I'll do it first and then you do it. Now we're going to start the magic of the jam. <laughs> and because there's tomato juice, we're just going to get all of it that we can into the pan. And then you do yours. Alrighty. Going to. Ta da! Got a leftover onion that did Stick not that make puppy it. puppy in. in there. Ta da! Okay, and now stir. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. And for the moment, we can say, look how healthy this is. <laughs> Cody's enjoying the show with leftovers. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> All right. So now what we're going to do, this is the bouillon. And um, chicken bouillon, beef bouillon, vegetable oh, bouillon, it's all good. And we're also going to have a little bit of stock here. When you're opening a chicken broth or a stickin', uh, chicken, stickin? a chicken, <laughs> container shake it up first whatever kind you're using and now what we're going to do and this is the one to two teaspoons but just eyeball it and remember this has salt in it so don't add salt at this point and now go ahead and stir that so you kind of want to coat everything correct? yes and see what's happening now the tomatoes are starting to let off their juice a little bit mm -hmm. and that's part of what's going to make the jam it's nice to have some broth or stock on hand just in case it starts to get a little bit dry. And if it does, you just put a little bit of liquid. But you don't have to. It just depends. Yeah. Now, if you want to get a little, a little spicy, oh, spicy, you can put in, because, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, some crushed red pepper flakes. Uh, don't overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because, yeah, if you thought the pepper was a thing, um, when this starts to hit the oil, you'll start to get the aroma and the fragrance of the chili peppers, which is a lovely thing until you're standing right over it, you know, <laughs> trying to breathe. <laughs> and see how nice that is? You might want to add a little bit more of the bouillon. Okay, and give that another stir. This is looking really beautiful. Is that not amazing? It is. And I'm going to check on the potatoes real quick while you're doing that. <laughs> if, look what happened to my glasses from the oven. <laughs> I need the glasses that have the little wipers. <laughs> the potatoes are fabulous and they're cooking. <laughs> Isn't it's that beautiful? starting to get a consistency of yes. jam. Yes. The, the more that the tomatoes cook down, the more the color will change and the more it'll start to get a, not gloppy because gloppy doesn't sound like a real good technical term but really kind of gloppy because it'll start to stick together isn't that beautiful yes okay so we'll keep going with that and now what we're going to do um, before we flip the the taters um, we are going to we're going to mix the meat <gasps> this is my favorite part oh. making burgers as a child Favorite part. Really? And yes. I, in my head, I'm going, oh, I don't want to touch it. So, <laughs> so I'm really glad that you're going to do this part. I know. It's a weird thing. And you know, um, so you've heard of the people who have um, the plastic 
gloves at home, mm -hmm. that would be me because <laughs> the texture is just so weird. Um, so we're going to use the two bowls here. And because we have, so, I mean, this is an, an enormous amount of 80-20 ground beef. And so we're going to divide the meat. Ew. Yuck. Between, <laughs> not yuck. Um, ew. In so, my household, I'm the one that separates the meat. They all go shopping and they put away the dishes, but I am, not dishes, the groceries, but I am the one that ends up separating meat because they don't want to touch it. I just want you to know that in my head I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're doing is, this is, what, this is a bigger pack of meat, which is cheaper than buying just the little single serve packs. Go ahead and I'll let you do this one. What you're doing is just sort of breaking it up a little bit. And that's because we're going to add some breadcrumbs and some peppers that we'll cut up. Going to move the bowl back. Yes. And move this forward ever so slightly. And I, yeah. And all you're doing is just trying to break it up because that's going to make it easier when we put this all together. Mm -hmm. And of course, yeah. it's looking beautiful. I know. It is just truly beautiful. Not the meat, y'all, but the jam. Well, the meat's... <laughs> meat <laughs> but we're gonna make some magic with the meat i didn't get any of the bottom part do you think i need some more in there or is it about half and half do you think i think it's about okay all right so what we're gonna do there's only one pepper and so i'm gonna start cutting that while the maven of meat here <laughs> is separating it <laughs> all right so what you're doing with the bell pepper oh did you just smell that the whiff of that pepper is beautiful. Okay, so cut the top off and you'll have the pepper separated like this. A lot of people will just throw this out because it's the top. No, just pop the little core thing out. There's probably a technical term for that, but pop it out and then this is trash. This you're able to cut and use. You learn something new every day. I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> I threw it away. <laughs> no, no, look, and it's more pepper that you can use. And then what you can do, if you see the inside, you don't want any of this um, pepper membrane and the seeds. So just, this is not as yucky as the meat. You stick your fingers in here and you grab the membrane and just start yanking it out. Now, my husband is really good at this. He'll take those seeds and plant them. Sometimes they grow, sometimes they don't. We're sort of, um, garden hobbyists that just put stuff in the ground to see what'll happen. Understood. So what you'll do after that is cut your pepper in half. Gosh, that smell. I wish we had smell-o-vision. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so you've also got these membranes and you want to kind of take as much of that out too. Um, and what you can't pull out with your fingers, I'll show you a knife trick. All right, let's move these little seeds over to the side. You'll go ahead and just start making some slices with the peppers because it'll make it easier to cut. And again, you're using your fingers not out like that, but this way as a shield, kind of a guide. And now, usually I would use a smaller knife than this, but always cut away from yourself. Just take the knife and just kind of make little small cuts at a time. To where you remove the membrane and then you're not going to have the white bits inside the pepper. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with that but but you don't need that. Mm -hmm. And then if you have to turn the pepper around to keep getting the membrane out, go ahead and do that. Y'all this jam, this vegetable jam I know, is look looking at beautiful. That. How is everybody else's vegetable jam yeah. going? Can I have a brave soul? Show us. Oh yeah, come on, jam. we want to see your jam. Dr. Ayella, I know you're cooking. <gasps> oh, she's like a chef. Dr. Yes. Ayella, if anybody's going to put bacon in this, besides Cody, it's you. Let <laughs> us see your jam. All right. So what we can do, that looks good and ready to go. So we're going to put that to the back and just let it sit. And then we're going to... I'm going to move the meat, and you're going to 
<laughs> you're going to cut some peppers. So let me give you that, unless you want this and you'd rather not kind of get the membranes out. I will attempt. Okay. <laughs> I can. I don't know how well that it's going to go. That pepper's got nothing on you. But it's going to go as good. That's perfect. The real trick with wow. the peppers, once you get the membranes out, you want to make them small enough so that they sort of blend into the meat. That, look how beautiful those cuts are. That's perfect. The only thing I can cut properly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job with that. You don't want the chunks to be so big when you start dicing them that um, the hamburger starts to act like a meatloaf instead of a burger. <laughs> because then you've got, as you're frying, you've got pieces of the pepper falling out of the hamburger and sometimes your burger will fall apart. And then I'm gonna slice up the top of the pepper because remember we can use that. All right, so now what we do, and you can do the, oh, you're doing it. Was that not it? Nope, that that's perfect. Oh, okay. And now we just. Yeah, you just, you're just making small little chunks like that. Grabs a few, because. Yeah, it's easier to do if you do, well, not easier, but if you do them a couple at a time, then it goes a little bit quicker. And what we'll have to do is just eyeball so that we each have about half for our pile of meat. That's a technical cooking term. Pile of meat. Yes. <laughs> John Barr cooked for Dr. Ayella. So Aww. John Barr's, boy, he is a chef too. There's some good food coming out of that household. Think. And you know, so we've got the oil, and if you went rogue and you put some bacon into the jam. Now this is where, because peppers are good and they're a vegetable and they're a dark vegetable at that, so they're healthier for you, you can say there's nothing wrong with bacon in, in tomato onion jam. It's a health food. <laughs> May I ask where you learned how to make this? Like where did this come from? Um, I am more a baker than I am a cook. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually was a vegetarian for, oh, decades, a long time. And so I didn't really learn how to cook meat. And when I got married to Wayne, um, he actually was not into the vegetarian <laughs> lifestyle. And so I had to learn how to cook meat. And my guilty pleasures would be the Food Network and the Cooking Channel. And when I can't sleep, I will watch those channels. And I'm probably obsessed with some chefs like Alton Brown or Mark Murphy or Iron Chef Alex Gornishelli, which sounds not in a stalkery, creepy way. Yeah. Um, but gosh, I, I don't know how they do what they do with food. And so um, that's something that Wayne and I started to learn to do together. And we cook together. Um, I. Baking is kind of a solitary thing for me. I do that just because it's, it's therapy. But cooking should be loud and raucous, um, and sometimes there are smoke alarms involved. Yes. Uh, I made a, some puff pastry that the dough broke. I didn't get the butter incorporated into it well enough. And so the two pounds of butter in the dough hit the bottom of the oven, you can imagine what happened. Yeah, it yes. wasn't pretty. Um, so we just, you can do wonderful things with food. Um, for baking, I always follow a recipe. For food like this, I think it's a challenge. Just start throwing things in there that you like. One of my favorite things in the world is roasted red peppers. And you can put that in this burger mix, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. How are, they? are these looking too big? No. Well, you might want to dice them just a teeny bit more, okay. but they're pretty darn close to what they need to be. And then... I have to pick up individuals now. I know. <laughs> Did this to myself, but it's okay. This is the it's fun learning part process. for the... It is a learning process. And as long as you... I think probably the worst thing I ever made... Um, and I highly recommend that you never do this. I decided to do 
a, a stir fry with broccoli and tuna, fish, mm -hmm. and from a can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that. Understood. I can't. Yeah, I can't even tell you how bad your house will smell. Um, probably I miss I misunderstood what was the recipe because for me the only tuna that I was familiar with was the chicken <laughs> of the sea that came out of a can. Well, there are so many more types of tuna from an actual fish, and not to say that tuna fish isn't a fish, but it, from a can it's processed, and I should have done the other. Oh, um, is that look too big? Okay. No. So now what? You just sprinkle it over the burger. Doesn't that look like Christmas? And I want to make sure that... Here's that the state question. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Red or green, I want Christmas. All right. So now, want a paper towel? Yes, What please. we have to do before we finish this is take um, a peek at those potatoes, the french fries. And what I'll do is grab a, one pan at a time. Um, and I'm not going to put my face in front of it this time. Oh, Ooh. gosh. Yeah. Can you hear the sizzle? We'll do one at a time. Oh, and you know what? Let's put it on top here because now what we do for this, you can see they're not quite crusty, but they're getting there. Mm -hmm. So you just take your spatula and you start doing this to flip them around a little bit. And some of them will stick on the bottom and that's okay. That's why they've got all that oil that's healthy and good for you good for your joints, and just start undoing them. This is one of the reasons that we don't put the Parmesan cheese on first, because they have to cook, and you don't want the cheese to burn and then stick to the pan, and then everybody's gathered around the pan, poke, you know, pulling them off with a fork or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know why, but if you have a metal spatula versus a plastic one on the French fries, it just works better. I don't. If somebody knows why that is, let me know. I don't know why it works better, but no matter what we do, if there are french fries or tater tots, um, a metal spatula works a lot better or easier. So you just kind of go around and flip these a little bit, unstick them from the pan, de-stick, unstick, loosen them up, and then just kind of flip them. Can you see this? I know. Isn't that beautiful? And so that's what we're doing is just kind of unsticking them and then turning them over. And if you touch them, yeah, they're hot, but you can feel that they are um, probably about halfway done. And so just keep doing that. I want to tell you, the bottom of that pan is hot. <laughs> <laughs> and then flip. And then I probably would wait a little bit more before I put the Parmesan on because these need to cook a little bit more. And you want them more fryish than baked potato-ish. So we'll put that in. And I'll put this in and then I'll let you do the second one. Let me flip the other one. Yeah. Ready. All right. <laughs> there you go. All righty. Did I accidentally? Yes. Well, moves to a different section of. <laughs> I'm gonna look for a metal one. Did it do? While you're f working on those puppies. Is anybody else flipping fries right now? I would love to see you flip fries. Here's a magical tool. This is not a spat. It's an offset spatula that you use for icing cakes, mm -hmm. but it's metal. It's like I will. I feel a little bit like that Psycho <laughs> movie now. <laughs> ee, ee, ee. <laughs> so, hold this side. Yeah, and see how much easier that does. I don't know what that is. Metal is thinner and a tad sharper for peak flipping capability. Awesome. So use metal. Yeah. See, look. This is just perfect. And flip. These fries are going to be the mushy ones. No, they'll get crisp. They okay. really will. Okay. I like that maximum or peak flipping capac uh, capability. All right. That one's stuck up. You know what I just realized will be the best part of this besides eating? We don't have to clean up. 
You're right. <laughs> well, you don't have to clean up, but. <laughs> oh, well, I would help. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> All right, so let's put this back in the oven for just a little bit. And now we're going to finish doing the, the burgers or the burger mix. All right. So you can get your measuring cup. Now the stock is really useful, or the chicken broth is really useful because you're going to mix seasoning and the peppers in with the burgers. So since I over pepper everything, <laughs> I do. Um, you know what I'm going to do? This is the cheating way, but I can see it a little bit better. Yeah, where that's all going in. <laughs> I'm going to let yes. you do yours. Okay. Yeah, and you'll do the same with the salt. It's just easier for me when I can see it. I forgot you moved. <laughs> that are you kidding? That's 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 my kind of pepper. For like all, like is that good for all of it, or like just that one, just more? I would put I'm a little bit more. more in there. Yeah. And we're also cheese, cheese. It's like a miracle food. <laughs> okay, ta-da. <laughs> All right. So now you're going to do a couple or so tablespoons of grated Parmesan. I feel like we should be singing or something. What should we be singing, though? I don't know. The okay. only thing that just popped <laughs> in my head was Oh Solo Mio, and that just didn't seem right. The only thing that popped in my head was the sound of music, not going to lie. <laughs> I, no, I was I was just gonna go and I, here I was uh, gonna cheese. I'm gonna you cheese. Can go ahead. Okay, so here and you can cheese now too. Ooh. And you just eyeball this to where you think, oh, more. It, it needs more. It looks good. Here's this is part of the jacked up. Um, I like spicy, so you put a little bit of spice if you want it. And I'm getting ready uh, to cry because I don't like this part. And we're going to do a little bit of breadcrumbs, too. And what's nice about these breadcrumbs, they're Italian style, so they've got some spices in there already, and I'll show you uh, what that looks like. Meat is really dense, and so what you're trying to do with the pepper and the cheese is just kind of make it less meaty, less mm -hmm. uh, um, dense and mm -hmm. thick and so this just kind of evens it out a little bit and you can't over breadcrumb or cheese or pepper and uh, that's because you've got some stock that you can add into it if you didn't have stock that's okay you could take a little bit of bouillon and throw it into some water and then mix it that way oh, this is just gonna be are you ready go in people you're just going in this is always the best part. So it, it immediately sort of starts to smell like a meatball. And if you want, you wouldn't have to use the bell pepper. You could use jalapenos instead. You could use roasted red peppers and chop them up. Um, if you have another veggie, you could sort of add to it that way. And all my bell peppers are sitting at the bottom. That yeah, it's you've got to talk to those babies and get them into the meat. And one of the reasons that you do this is the flavor. But when you add the breadcrumbs and the cheese and such, it actually makes the amount of meat you have go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's cost effective that way. And you just you just keep doing this till it feels like it's going to be enough to hold together as a patty because what we're going to do is make patties with this and then we're going to hide some cheese in it and stick some burger over it when we cook it. We're, that's a, just such a rogue thing. And so the peppers help kind of break up the beefy. <laughs> and you know what? You can use any kind of meat with this. Um, what we do when we buy, we'll buy beef or ground pork or ground turkey or chicken and whatever the recipe calls for, if we have leftover, we'll just put the leftover bits in a bag and put it in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And then after we have, you know, some pork, some chicken, some turkey, some beef, we'll squish it all together and we'll make a meatloaf out of it. Nice. All right. 
How do you feel about your meat? My peppers are not cooperating with me. Well, that's okay. We'll just sort of squash them into the... One of the nice things about this too is if you've got some rogue peppers that fall out of the, the burgers when you start to make them, they'll cook on their own in the pan while you're, you're sauteing the hamburgers and then you can just scoop them out at the end and put them on top after you load them up with jam. Understood. All right, so there you go. He looking a little nice now. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? And you know, if you think, no, I don't want to make burgers out of this, mm -hmm. um, you could actually put this into a meatloaf pan and have a nice meatloaf too. Instead of having to, and you know what? Oh, I'll bet you could put, you could take the meatloaf and put some of it in the pan and then stick the cheese in it and then put the rest on. Mm -hmm. It'd be like a giant burger. All right, so. Now what we're going to do is get the other pan out that we have. And we'll start, we're going to start the stove and I'm going to show you a trick. I'll put it on like four, is that okay? Three. Yeah, put four-ish, five-ish. Four-ish is four probably good. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Split the difference. So we're not going to, you can do a couple of things. You could put oil in the pan and cook the burgers that way. Or, this is 80-20 beef, so it's going to have um, some grease that comes out of it. And so what, what I do, because it makes a crust, I put salt on the bottom of the pan. Because remember, we haven't put any salt. Um, you stick it in there and the salt makes a crust. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what makes the burger so good, is that you want the salt crust to go on. We're going to open it up this way because that those are like toy holes. <laughs> okay, and so just do this. That's like and my if, type of salt. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and if you're afraid of the salt, then um, just use oil. You know, if you're if you're on a salt restricted diet, I don't think seasoned salt would work with this. Um, there's just something about the salt when the burger goes on it that it starts to fry and it makes a crust. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool thing to, to see. All right, so now we're gonna uh, make the- Yes, patties, patties. Pat uh, <laughs> that's entertaining. <laughs> that's, Trademark it. <laughs> that's funny, that's funny. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna make patties, patties. <laughs> so what you're gonna do um, is just kind of eyeball it, right? And, um, patty it out and actually be, we could use the cutting board because we're not going to cut anything else up so we don't have to worry about contaminating veggies or anything mm -hmm. and you want to squish it again this is the le I, I'm oh because of the meat touch it's a weird feel isn't it it is a bit strange okay and so you make them I don't know is that like a quarter inch thick thereabouts so you yeah. just, <laughs> I know, math, <laughs> how, what, so you can kind of see what the thickness is. And there's a reason that you don't want it overly thick. Um, we're going to put some cheese in the center and then we're going to put a burger on top of it. That's part of the jacked up part. And let me dry my hands here. I don't want to put my hand with burgers inside the cheese. So what we're going to do is pour some cheese into the bowl. There, and we'll start with that amount. All right, so burger number one, here you go. I had a rogue pepper. Rogue pepper. And then you have another glob of the beef by your hand. And here's, here's it, this is magical. Just uh, stick, I know. Oh my gosh. You stick the cheese in the middle. Doesn't, we're using mozzarella. Um, whatever kind of cheese you have, you use. And then you're gonna make another patty, and this is why you kind of make them thin, because you want them to cook all the way through. So you're making, this is, this is a burger hat. You're just kind of smushing it out, and then you're gonna stick it over the cheese part, right? <laughs> I did that very incorrectly, but it's okay. And then you're just going to start squishing it together so that the cheese can't escape. 
This one's a thick boy. That's all yeah. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, and see, so then the burger that looked kind of puny before, once it's all together with the cheese and such, see, look at it. There you go. I would say it's a success. Yeah. So now, um, let's do one more of those because I think we can fit four in a pan. So we'll each make one more. Oop, that's a little too much. And see, you can't you can't go wrong with this. There are, there are no rules. Um, yeah, who is this? Anybody out there making patties? I would love to see what you guys are doing. We would. Mr. Kemet, <gasps> I know you're cooking. Oh, come on. Yeah, what are you what have you got going on in your kitchen? Does anybody else hate this as much as I do, the feel of it? <laughs> or is, is that just a weird thing? No, it's it's valid. Most people don't like it. I'm just weird because I do like it. <laughs> Did I use too much cheese? A little bit, yes. Uh, now, uh, there's no such thing as too much cheese. Just put the cheese in there again, remember? And then you're going to make a little meat hat for it. Oop. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Kevin said he's just watching tonight. Keep up the good work. I wish you could smell it in here. It smells so good. All right, so we put the little meat hat on top of the cheese pile. I went serious when I made a meat hat. This burger, this one's not equal to the other one. <laughs> just, here, and you know what you can just do to seal it? Ta -da, ta -da. Yeah, just start to squish the edges together like that. And that way it makes a seal, and then you can start squashing that way. And again, if they come out a little bit, or you see like you've got a pepper that's trying to burst through the beef, just stick another blop of burger on there. All right. Can you see our burgers? It kind of blended in with my hand now that I look at the actual <laughs> thing. I'm like, oh. <laughs> And we'll just do a quick turn around the edges to make sure it's sealed. And all you're doing is just using your hands to kind of smoosh together the two layers, the burger hat, like that. And if you've got some little cheese shards, that's OK. All right, take the burgers, oh. put them in the pan with the salt. Prepare to hear I'll a listen. sizzle. I'll let you hear Ooh. that. That's an awesome pan. We could have probably put another, but you know, you don't want to over fill the pan. Ugh, it already smells fabulous. I know, <laughs> I'm telling you. And the beauty in this is that you can put anything you want in the burger. I just happen to love bell pepper. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm fooling myself that, you know, it's, it's healthy, but it is kind of healthy. <laughs> right? And so now, We'll just, you'll have to adjust your heat accordingly. And electric stoves cook a little, boy, look how beautiful that is. Those are some beautiful burgers. Yeah. So just kind of watch it. And what happens is that the salt will make the crust. And we'll just let it go because remember, you've got two thin burgers that are um, trying to get cooked all the way through. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Are we going to add more salt when these ones are cooked? Would we, we, you just kind of eyeball the pan and see what it looks like? Okay. And we'll make some more burgers because um, that was a I don't healthy, think healthy glove. Yeah, four or not four burgers won't be enough for people. No. And so we'll just kind of keep letting that go. Anybody doing a burger that you want to share and let everybody else see? Please, we can't be the only ones with fabulous burgers, if else. <laughs> they are pretty dang fabulous, aren't they? They are. And it's so simple. It's a hamburger. But just doing those little extra steps, it's a surprise. And what you could also do, if you don't have shredded cheese, you could just use block cheese and cut little squares, pop them in, and it's the same thing. And then you make the, the burger top. And if you look in the pan, you can start to see where the juice is coming out of the burgers um, and starting to brown on the bottom. And so you don't want the stove so high that they'll cook too fast on the outside. Can we turn it down? No, I think it's oh. perfect the way you have it. <laughs> dun, dun, <I> dun. <laughs> <laughs> there, and we do the burger hat thing again. I think. Ooh. Look 
this one also finna be a little thick. That's okay. And if you don't want to do cheese in the middle, don't. Just go ahead and cook the burgers and then put cheese on at the end. How, how pretty is that? And you just keep making these burgers until all the hamburger is used up. That one a thick, thick boy. He, <laughs> he a healthy. That one's for Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Here in the... Oh, Melissa says, look, they look so good. She's going to have to make those this weekend. Yes. You know, if you feel fancy, um, I happen to love brie cheese. Oh. You can, you can chop a little chunk of brie mm -hmm. and stick it in there. It, it takes the burger to the next level. Ooh. Now, I don't know this because I know it for myself. I know it because um, Alton Brown. Um, <laughs> when you flip your burgers, don't squish it because that makes all the juice come out. And what we're trying to do is keep them real juicy and moist. And you can see how they're turning a little bit on the end. We'll let them go a little bit more. And we'll do another cheese and again if you don't want to do cheese leave them just do a plain old burger i will leave this one plain okay and then i'll make this last <sighs> one here also people if it starts popping at you either move away or turn it down a little bit yeah i'm and going to move away so. <laughs> electric cooks differently than gas and so you just kind of if what you would do on a gas stove Pay a little bit more attention um, till you get comfortable with electric because it cooks differently. Mm -hmm. um, and listen to me sound like I know what I'm talking about. I mean, this you is do. truly like the first time in 15 years that I've cooked on an electric stove. All right. You want to flip one? Yes. You want to do it or you want me to? I can. I just know my mother always gets mad because I always end up plopping them down. Flip it. Do it away from yourself. We need some burger flipping music. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I attempted. Didn't work. That's okay. There you go. Uh, and look at that crust. Isn't that... Doesn't... Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, You're, wow. Look. Somebody's doing it. Who's uh, are those? John Montgomery. All right. Those are Fabulous. Thank you, Aisha. <laughs> All righty, and counter. And cook, yeah, you can see where the hot spot is. And now you'll have to, I don't like my meat oh, no. to move. That one's coming apart. Nope, that's okay. We'll just leave it. Ooh. How about I let you quick flip this last uh, one? See, remember <laughs> about the turning yep. of the handle? <laughs> and then just flip it. Look at that. Those look beautiful. They really do. And this one, and that's okay. That'll give it something to, we'll do that to make a little vent hole. All right. So while this is doing, we're going to check on the potatoes again. Ready to give them a, uh, do not stand in front of the oven. Oh, those look absolutely beautiful. So we've... <laughs> and we're going to use the offset spatula for peak flipping capability. Capacity. Or capability, you're right, I said capacity. Wow. Aren't those nice? I am going to turn this down just a little bit. Yeah, popping a bit. Gonna move it to a solid three. All right. So now what we'll do is just go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of the parmesan on it. They still have a little bit more crisping to do, but look at that. Oh, shall I do the honors? Oop. So it's like your French fries had a party. And I'll put this one back in. <gasps> those look beautiful. They who, really oh, do. Oh, who did those? Dr. Montgomery again. <laughs> uh, Dr. Montgomery, you need to be here with us. 
And so we're doing the same thing. Yeah. (laughs) And when they pop out on the stove. Yes. You always have to taste test it. Always have to. They are so good. But you can see that this is why you do the cheese at the last. Mm Mm-hmm. They are very yummy, Dr. Ayala. Okay. Very. Let's sprinkle the cheese there. And now these will go back for just a little bit. You don't want to leave them in too long because then uh, the cheese will burn. All right. The burgers, you can clearly tell which ones are mine. (laughs) (laughs) No, there's no bad burger. And then what you'll want to do again is you can move them around, especially since... We know there's a hot spot, flip them, and then put the part that doesn't look as done as the rest into the area of the pan that's more warm, and just let it kind of go that way. This one will have to, because it's thick, we'll have to let it cook a little bit more. You can see that it's still Uh red, but that's okay. Am I going back and fixing my burgers now? Yes. (laughs) I can't even say how good it smells in here. All right, now what we can do, two of these almost feel like they're done. These two will take a little bit more. I'm gonna stick another two in the pan. Where would you like to put the done burgers? Let me get a, yeah, we'll put them in the glass. And look at those. Wow, (gasps) there's some cheese leaking through on the back one. Oh, beautiful it really is. All right, so let's now we'll give them a, a little bit, a couple more minutes too, just around the edges. I think your big boy is prop that one. <laughs> that, this yeah. is like the Mac Daddy of burgers, <laughs> so that one will take a little bit more. So we'll just put him in the middle. Okay. My glasses keep falling off of my. <laughs> All right, so what we can do now um, is butter the burger. I was like, we use both of the pans that we want. You know, that's okay. We will just continue to make more burgers. We'll do that. I'll put the jam in this one. And look at this. I'm trying to get out of the way so that, (laughs) yeah. See that? All that jammy goodness? We're just going to stick that in this pan. And because of the juiciness of the burger, toasting the buns will have them stay up a little bit. uh, Would you like to wash the pan? You I was going to use it? a paper towel. Okay. Would that be all right? Yes. Okay. The toasting of the buns, if you look at these guys, you can see how juicy they are. But by the time you put the burger on the bread and then the jam, if the bun isn't toasted, then it just sort of soaks in. Yeah. And you have a burger catastrophe because the bread falls apart. And your Mac Daddy burger is still going strong. <laughs> Learn from the mistakes, people. Lessen the meat in your burgers. All right. So now, question. Yes. Do you toast your buns with mayonnaise or butter? Um, I actually do both. Oh, okay. Mayonnaise makes a beautiful grilled cheese sandwich. So if you've got mayo and you don't have butter, then you just use uh, mayo. Because really what you're trying to do is get it firm enough so that the juice won't just sog up the bread and it falls apart in your hands. Mm -hmm. And I think we, did we run out of paper towels? No, we didn't. Okay. And we'll just wipe out this pan. Add some more cheesy cheese. Grab some burger mix. (laughs) All right, and then we'll just start buttering buttering our buns and toasting them, and then we'll assemble one of these. Was I in the way a little bit right there? You yes. were not at all. 
All right, so these two, let's move these guys. I give you burger number one. I give you burger number two. It looks like the Mac Daddy is doing, oh <laughs> man, that's gorgeous. Yeah, when you bite into one of these two burgers, you're gonna know that you bit into a burger. That, it's gonna sing. So all you have to do for the bread. I think this one was a success. And you don't have to use bread on your burger. I would prefer not to have bread, actually. Mm -hmm. You can just, um, what I do a lot of times is just eat the french fries with, with the hamburger. I don't need the bread. Um, but if you're a bread person, I am. Toast them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is one I that might have I very much like a... bread, as you can yeah? see. Um. <laughs> I'm going to use another offset spatula. And the, the buns won't take very long to toast. All you do is just, you can tell how hot it's gotten in the kitchen <laughs> because the butter is very melty. That is something that you use mayo with the bread too. I told somebody I did that, and they said, that's just disgusting. And I said, mm -mm. what do you think mayo is? <laughs> if you can put mayo in a cake, you can put mayo on bread. To yeah, wait, you can. wait, who'll be putting mayonnaise in a cake? You did. Hold up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All mayonnaise is is a little bit of oil and egg that's whiz whizzed together. So you can use that in place of oil in your cake, and it is so tasty. Under Understood. Yeah. I remember faintly from childhood hearing that, but I thought it was a dream. Not gonna lie. It was a. a <laughs> it's, this is a terrible joke. <laughs> I Let really me. did for a hot second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now what we'll do is just kind of watch the bread as it's toasting, and then we'll assemble a burger. And I do this with my hands. Yeah. I just flip it to see if it's getting toasty, and then I adjust. This isn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. sorry. We'll get that up. <laughs> and then we'll have to put the fries on something. We'll worry about that in a minute after we plate up our burger. Okay. OC makes the best chocolate cake ever. Does it? it? I'll it, have to try that, Mr. Yeah. Cody Spitz. It's very good. And you know, if you don't have oil, if you run out of oil for your cake, you can throw in mayo, you can throw in... Um, applesauce. You can squish up a apple banana. Applesauce. Yeah. Yeah. The more you know, people, the more you know. <laughs> All right, Mac Daddy is coming out. <laughs> Two Mac Daddies. These burgers, y'all, beautiful is what it, they look like. We'll just do these two to keep them going. <gasps> That'll actually work wonderfully. Thank you. We have another pan. Oh, very nice. This is what we'll put the bread on. It's still, it's working its magic. In front of the meat you go. This is what the kitchen looks like after I cook. I don't know if you can, it's just spread out. And you know what, if you had some flour, you could dab it on your face a little bit and then come out oh, like you've done. <laughs> <laughs> it was such an effort. Yes. Okay, and these are still not toasty, but we'll just keep watching Dr. It. Montgomery, do you have any done burgers? Oh yeah, let's see the burgers. Pretty please, I'm just kidding. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to, to get one of these. <gasps> ah, oh, there you beautiful. go, that is beautiful. A round of applause for those, are, those really are beautiful, beautiful. They almost look as good as ours. Ah! <laughs> Just kidding, they look equally as beautiful. They really do. It's funny, the bread is taking the longest to try to... Maybe what I'll do, maybe this is the one that had the hot spot. We'll just carefully move that because there's a lot of grease in there. Mm -hmm. We'll cook the burgers here and we'll just watch the bread because we need to plate this up and see what it looks like.
And all you have to do to test is just flip the burger over to see if it's starting to get that nice grilled look. Yeah, that one really has a... And I just, you know, that sound just makes me think that the burgers are working. I, I just like that sound. They're doing <laughs> their job. Just getting nice and... Look, I did turn this one down, so I will turn it back up. Just a little bit. A lot. A little. All right. How do you think the fries are doing? Let's take a look since it's taking a, a bit longer for the buns. Oh, these are awesome. <gasps> no, <yeah. laughs> no, you can't take that. All right, let's get a place to put these and then we'll get them out of the oven. You know what we can do is turn this one upside and put it on top of that. <clears throat> these are going to be delicious. We'll move this so. Oh. Never mind. We've got one more. Shall we put it on top of this bowl? Have, no, we could, because that's levels. metal, so it won't. <laughs> I know, so now it, we're not only cooking, but we're making food art by properly staging our area. <laughs> In my hands you go, Red. All right, so take a bottom, mm -hmm. take a burger. They, they shrunk <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was very entertaining so to look. This is, yeah, <laughs> we sort of have a burger catastrophe. So there's a couple of things you can do. The burger, because it's 80-20 um, fat to meat, or meat to fat, it shrunk a little bit. Um, so you can either cut up one of the other burgers and fill it, or just eat the bread. Um, let's get a spoon for the jam. can't find one, we'll use this. And I'm thank you, KENW, for letting us run around your kitchen and use your stuff. Yes. You take a little bit of the jam. And remember, this has the tomato and the broth. Looks absolutely beautiful. And the red peppers. You can get a little fancy, cheese it up. I'm going to turn that off. And there you go. Burgers. And we'll do another one. I'm going to touch this with my hands, people, but it's okay. I'm a professional. Yeah, oh, those are warm. <laughs> that one got a nice little crisp to it on the side. Oh, yeah. And then we'll do the same thing again. You know, I could just kind of eat this by itself. <laughs> and there you go. Cheese it up a little bit. More crusty. Ouch, that's warm. <laughs> Shall we add some fries to the plate? I think so. To perfect the aesthetic. Oh, that's very fancy. <laughs> very fancy. All right. So here we have, my hands are clean, Parmesan, salt, pepper fries with the burgers. And there you go. Yes. I feel like we should go bam or something, you know. There you go. Throws cheese in the air for confetti. <laughs> there you have it, jacked up burgers and fries. You want to taste it? I do. You want to bite it? I, I would love to bite it. Okay. Here, let's cut one. Okay. I'm going to cut it here. Look how pretty inside that is. I don't know where to hold that. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful. It's hot. Okay. <laughs> Ow. Okay, you ready to bite it? Yes. Okay, here we go.
Oh my goodness. I didn't think that through before I did it. <laughs> Biting and chewing. That is so good. It is so good. I don't want to put it down. Yeah. Um, French fries. That is so good too. I have to say, we don't suck. This works right. very well. <laughs> hey, we didn't set anything on fire. Um, very glad about that. I asked you to do this one with Dr. Dobson and I was like, you know what? The fact that he said that Mr. Ray Cell Cost said yes, said he had faith in us. <laughs> <laughs> and we, this is it. This is jacked up burgers and fries. Um, <laughs> a meal fit for a donut lover. That must be John Erdman. I will tell you um, that I don't know that I would do this, but you could take a plain, this, this might set some of you off. You can take a plain glazed donut, you can slice the donut in half. <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> and then you put butter or mayo on it, you toast it, and then you put the burger on that. How about that, John Erdman? I will wake up specifically at nine o'clock in the morning to go get some donuts <laughs> solely to try this. We're done. I don't actually know how to end now. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> I want to say thank you, Dr. Dawson, for thank teaching you. us how to cook this because you did a fantastic job. Round of applause. Round of applause. We did good. We did. This was so much fun. Thank you for asking me to do this. I'm going to move the burgers because they're going so they loudly now crisp. that I can't hear. <laughs> um, I just want to, like, ASCB wants to thank everybody that logged in today and <clears throat> either made or just watched us make some jacked up burgers um, with Dr. Dobson again. And um, another big, big thank you to KENW, um, especially to the student workers, Aisha, oh, Owen, Marilyn, Leandre, yes, Claire, and Adon. And they're getting food when we're done. They are. And so. who, whichever John said about the donut, just know that tomorrow she's getting donuts to do this because you said I it. Will. I can't tell which John said it. <laughs> I'm going to take a burger home just to try it. <laughs> um, but ASAB appreciates you. We got one more event for this month, a movie night coming up next week. Um, the link will be sent out to your emails. We are showing Half Brothers, if I am correct. And then after that, we got De-Stress Fest. And then that's it for the semester. Coming back next semester, though, strong. Coming back strong, so. Thank you, everybody, that logged in and watched us cook. It was fun. We should Thank do this again. again. Yes, we will.